So starting with desire, once again, we're all great things begin. Uh, you have to push yourself, you have to want more for yourself. And a perfect example of that is a poem that uh, I found called My Wage by Jesse B. Rittenhouse. And the poem goes like this, pay no more. However, I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is just an employer who gives you what you ask, but once you have set the wages, why, you must bear the test. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn this made that any wage I had asked of life, life would have been. Anybody tell me like how that makes them feel? Or what does it mean? And we have to expect more 
Exactly. You get more. Exactly. You have to expect more from yourself to get more, right? And it makes you with faith and desire means that you have to believe that you can get there. Okay. It's not just, oh, this is what I want. It's, oh, this is what I want. This is how hard I'm going to work for it. And this is what I feel about this. So it's a commitment at the end of the day. So there's a story that uh, Dr. Osborne likes to tell me things or like something that I want. Um, the story is there was a person seeking some greater knowledge, whether it be knowledge itself or knowledge of the universe. And they went to many masters trying to find access to this knowledge. And they were falling short left and right. Each master or sage wasn't giving them the knowledge that they wanted until finally they came across this amazing mystical sage that they could just tell, really could tell them how to succeed, right? So they asked the sage, how can I do this? How can I become like you? And the sage says, simple. Meet me at the beach tomorrow. I'm gonna show you, right? So the person meets the sage at the beach and it's like, okay, what do I do? And the sage just says, walk out into the water. They walk out into the water, starts coming up to their knees. The sage says, keep going. It's their, it's their belly button, that make or break point where you either have to commit, jump in, or pull all the way out. The sage says, keep going. The person gets into the water, neck deep, head deep, and then turns back and looks at the sage. And the sage grabs them and pushes them underwater. For a second there, he thinks that there might be a lesson to be learned because he's kind of relaxing, he's hanging out. But after about 30 seconds to a minute, he starts to freak out because he realizes he's running out of oxygen. So he starts to tap the sage, he starts to try to struggle, and the sage just holds him underwater as he starts to lose oxygen. He starts to lose contact with the world, and the world is just kind of shrinking in on him. And then finally, right before he's about to pass out, the sage lets him up, pulls him underwater, that's gasping for breath, and he goes, what was I supposed to learn from all that? And the sage goes, that's how you succeed. When you want to succeed as badly as you wanted to lose in that moment, that's when you're going to do the changes that you need to make. So, how do you make these changes? Number one, you have to control your mind. I've got a question to pose for you. Are you your thoughts? Are you your thoughts? analogy of a programmer. Um, that person is typing into a computer program and creating, and that program runs over and over again. You think about the same thing, right? Like you'd be the computer programmer in that situation, and your thoughts would be the program that you're basically putting in. So you have to guard your mental diet with, with a lot of care. Just like, you know, when you're eating something, you're eating something bad, that's how it becomes your body. Or if you're thinking something bad, that becomes your mind, and those become your habits. So there are two things in here uh, that we like to talk about called your apps and your hands. Your apps are your automatic positive thoughts and your hands are your automatic negative thoughts. Also known as self-hypnosis self or just self-deception. So your self-hypnosis is when you're telling yourself something positive that you want to repeat over and over again and your self-deception are basically when you see something and it triggers a negative thought about yourself. Say you want to get fit or you want a nicer car. You see somebody with a nice car and you look at them look over at them start to feel bad about yourself and like, I should have that, why don't I have that? And it kind of sends you down a spiral and like pushes you deep for the rest of your day. But the thing about those is that they always come with warning signs, right? They have signals. Just like your body when you have pain or when you start to get a cough, those are signals of a deeper problem, right? So those warning signs, uh, you can do three things with those. What you do is you pause, those are alerts, and then you cancel them before they can become those negative thoughts or ideas place them with positive affirmations. So instead of thinking, oh man, I deserve this car, but I'm too poor right now. You pause at that thought, and it starts to make you feel bad. Cancel it out, erase it from your mind, and replace it with something better like, I'm so, so glad that I'm working to buy a new car, because one day I'm going to be able to do it, I'm going to be able to purchase that car, and I'm going to be able to take that next step in my life. And the importance in that is adding the gratitude, right? So that's how you reframe your negative thoughts and you start to see adversity as an opportunity. So everything that you do, uh, once you bring awareness to something, it allows you to change it. If you see your adversity as an opportunity, it becomes almost like a challenge. Right? So uh, goal setting is also extremely important. Right? So your brain is extremely smart. 
the brain is the smarter you are, not why you do it. And there's two things that are important to the brain, and there's possibility and there's probability. So if you have a goal and it's outrageous, no matter how much you repeat it to yourself, you're not gonna believe it. So if you're saying, oh, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds by tomorrow, and secretly you know that that's impossible, that's not gonna work. You have to take action steps, you have to plan, and you break them down, and you uh, basically enable yourself in order to learn new things. So, bringing it all together with your apps and your hands, you do your positive affirmation, you reframe your negative thought, and you attach a positive emotion to it. So if you look in your better results faster packet, I kind of gave you some tools in order to do that. The first one we call a map of consciousness developed by David McConnell. It basically shows you, uh, in a, on a scale, a logarithmic scale, uh, how your emotions rank against each other. So if you want to empower yourself to have your best thoughts and get your best abilities, you want to use the highest emo emotions available to you in that moment to access it. So say that you want to transform yourself and you want to you know, lose weight or gain muscle by going to the gym. You can empower yourself with joy or lo a loved one. Say, like, I'm going to the gym because I want to spend basically shows you a scale um, that you can use to reframe your personal thoughts about yourself. So if you take a moment to look at this, uh, you can say, like, you know, if somebody thinks about themselves as, oh, I'm excessive, something that's on that same scale but the opposite side could be, I live in abundance. Or saying that, uh, you know, you're, you're pitying somebody could be, I'm very sympathetic. Or if you're calculating, you could be candid. And those help you reframe those thoughts about yourself as well. So, like we bring this back to action steps. People always uh, have objections like, oh, Dr. Hoffman, there's not enough time in the day. I do so much. This right here is the answer to that problem. This is what we like to call a war plan. Um, everybody has the same 24 hours every day, but different people can do different things with it because of how they plan to utilize the time. So it's been shown that the most effective people chart their work down to the minute. If you think that you don't have enough to do in your day, then that means that you've got to shift some things around, compact some things, and start to live your life like you're in a battle. You know, you have to feed that warrior side of yourself and really uh, excel by, by growth, bringing things down to a mental level. So this work plan here is uh, Dr. Hustling's. This is basically how he gets his things done for this guy. He's got already all the time, right? So, you've got your shift, your things to work, connect calls, everything that you can possibly think of that you can build into your day. Write it down, list it in order of your priorities, and then build it into 15 minute segments so that you can optimize and utilize your time. Do you have any questions? I'm good, my face is right there. I personally think so too, but I'm trying to get there so <laughs> Lastly, I want to leave you guys with two things, two questions here. Uh, what is my why? Take a second, think about that. Why are you here? What are you doing? What does my life look like? And what do I want it to look like? And do those answers align? And if not, are you willing to do the work to change? You have to have the desire. day uh, you're getting up and you're suffering or you're getting down on yourself and thinking about all the things that you could have and you need or that you want, that takes energy. So just encourage yourself to start taking those small steps in the opposite direction. And I promise you that we will get Awesome. Good job, Dr. Goss. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> guy. All right, so Dr. Goss was 100% right on because I think one of the things that we realize is that 
most of the times, like we think of what do I have to do? Does that make sense? Okay, give me the magic pill, give me the magic, you know, the secret, right? What's the secret for me to be able to have all these changes that I want in my life? And so if you ever ask me, like I come to the table, you're on the table, I say, the first thing you're like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'll probably say phenomenal. I'll say fantastic, I'll say unbelievable, I'll say incredible. What am I gonna do? Say, oh, well, I have an ingrown toenail, I'm just a little bit slower, you know? And I think that's the thing, is that our words have power there. So when you look at that chart, right, you know, you'll see on the lower level, you'll see anger and shame as being lower vibrations, right? And so you think about relationships when you're in anger and shame with somebody, like how do you feel? And then you see like love at the top of that. So you actually get to see on that chart like where you want to be, right? Like, and so then, then what we do is we choose the thoughts that support that, and then when you choose the thoughts that support that, then you choose the actions that support that, and then guess what happens? You start having more love, right? You start having more passion in your life. And so that's why Max Mind is so important. Now, the second thing that's important is this. Um, when we look at um, our, the war plan that I was talking about, in a second, I'm gonna go through a lot of stuff. Okay, and you're like, Where, how, do, how do I do that? Like, that's that's too much. Like, it's overwhelming. I, and, and, I'm, and, I, and I would encourage you to start looking at our schedule. And right now, all of us have overtime in our schedules, right? We're like, what, what do I do with all my extra time? The point is, is that what we start to do is schedule in the things that we want to do, uh, the person that we want to be. At one time, I read a book called The On Purpose Person. Uh, and I don't even know if it's in, in, in print, um, but what happens is, is there was a guy that life was falling apart, and, and basically what he had to do was find out what his purpose was in life. He was wandering aimlessly. And so when he fat, sat down, he started writing out his purposes. So when I look at my purposes, my first purpose is my relationship with my God. My second purpose is my relationship with myself, the things that I do to me to help me become a better person. Right, and then I can't do that if I don't have my relationship with my faith. And the third thing is my relationship with my wife. And if I suck as a husband, as a human being, how can I be a good husband? Does that make sense? Like, how can I have the energy for to be able to have a relationship? The fourth thing is with my kids. Like, that's my fourth purpose in my life. So if my kids are like, "Hey, mommy, mommy, mommy," right, and my wife and I are having like need to have time together, there's a priority there. Like, I, it allows me to strategize and prioritize things. My fifth is my relationship with the healer. My sixth is my relationship with running a business. My seventh is my relationship with my family. And the eighth is my friends. So it doesn't mean I don't care about my friends, but if somebody calls me and says, hey, look, I want to go to a Sharps game with you, and my wife's not feeling good or she had a bad day, you're talking a priority three and a priority eight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it makes life much easier when we know what our priorities or our purposes are there. So the first thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is write out your purposes. Okay. And then when you're putting your war plan together, start putting one thing in that each week for each of those purposes that you're going to do. Something for yourself, something for your spouse, something for your kids, something for something that will help you move forward on your purpose in life. Okay? And that's actually how I develop my war plan. So it allows me, I put the big rocks in first, fill in the small rock. It's the same thing that we do in this office, we have five essentials. And this is our Better Results Faster class. And the reason why we do Better Results Faster because what we don't want to do is get worse results slower. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. but that's like what typical healthcare is. Like, how do we keep you from getting sick slower? We're like, hey, I don't care about sickness. All I want to do is keep you healthy. And there's an important thing to understand is, and I've had this discussion many times. People are like, why don't you and my doctor agree on things? And I'm like, well, we do. We're, 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 we're not in the same healthcare profession. See, there's three different types of healthcare. There's what we call tier one healthcare. Tier one healthcare is a if you if you break your leg, they're going to fix your leg. If you're if you you know you have a big brain tumor pressing in your head, they're going to remove it, right? You're having a heart attack right now, and they're going to have to do something to save your life. It's crisis care. It's the body falling apart. It's the end of a process. It's a trauma of some type, and it's great for what it is. You know, I cut my arm off. I'm not going to chiropractor. Now, tier two healthcare is different. So an example of tier two healthcare is this. Imagine what are we doing right now? So tier one healthcare would be like, hey, let's put somebody on a ventilator. Tier two healthcare says it's about prevention. So our idea of prevention is this. Maybe what we should do is actually um, um, like have everybody social distance and wear masks and, and separate and never do anything to connect. Or maybe you know we're concerned about having uh, like breast cancer. So we 
We do mammograms every single year and radiate the breast every single year until we find a tumor and we catch that tumor at an early stage, then we can treat it. Does that make sense? We wait for a disease to happen or we try to prevent that. Tier three, and this is where we specialize in, is it, it's focusing on health. It's not waiting until we have a tumor. We just don't want to ever have a tumor. It's, it, and what we start to find is that when we focus on our health, we have less and less need for tier two and tier one healthcare. Okay? Now, the problem with tier three healthcare is it takes personal responsibility and it takes a path and it takes a plan. And so, Max Mind is your number one path because you can undo more in one day with a bad mindset than you can do in a whole year of eating vegetables. Okay? Have you guys ever noticed that you do all these good things and then all of a sudden you have a bad day? And all of your good work that you do, all of like the exercise that you do, you disappear, and then you spiral out and you're back where you started at. So we have to constantly guard our mind. And then the, the other thing is we need, and that's what Dr. The, the importance of what Dr. Das was talking about is having that, 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 that really choosing the words that you use to describe your life experience. And if you choose those words, eventually that will be your life experience. There was actually a study when they said that parents, um, like children, uh, over 70% of the words that they use are the exact words that their, their parents use. Wow. Think about that. We have about 13,000, I think, uh, adjectives in the Earth English language. The average child uses almost the exact same adjectives that their parents use to describe their life experience. And it's about 78, I think it was 78 or 98, I can't remember the exact number, actual adjectives. So like we literally have 13,000 adjectives and we use the same you know, 78 or 98 adjectives describe our life experience. And no wonder why we have the same healthcare issues our parents have, because we, we repeat the same mantras into our heads, these incantations, these spells. And so that's why when somebody comes in here, many times they're they're broken, they have all the issues there, they've lost their path, they become disillusioned. And what we tell them is this. The God put the most amazing healing power in your body and your brain. And it sends messages down your spinal cord, out the nerves, to every single tissue cell and organ. So for your heart to beat, for your lungs to breathe, for you to hear me, for you to see me, for you to heal a cut, for you to heal cancer, and you need to digest your dinner tonight, those messages have to get down under your fear with it. What that means is this, is that you are brilliant and powerful. Like for a sperm and an egg to come together to be you, and for you to go like this and to lose slough skin off your hand and that skin to regenerate itself, and heart cells die today, lung cells die today, and you get brand new cells today, that you're a walking miracle. And we've forgotten that because we've been told that we're designed to, to fall apart. And that's what our job is in here. And that's why it, it, that, that when we start looking at the nervous system, if we don't take care of the nervous system, I don't care what I feed you, right? If you can't digest what I feed you. Yeah. I don't care, well, like if you exercise, if you're not gonna be able to get the oxygen that your body needs to exercise. I don't care if, if like we try to remove toxins, if you have pressure on the nerves that are going to the liver that, that, that detoxify you. So we come to this what called, what's called an outside-in mentality. It says, let's look to the outside for the source of all of our problems. Tier 3 Healthcare says, all the source of your problems are on the inside, right? It's nobody else's fault. It's not your mom's fault. It's not your dad's fault. It's not your dean's fault. It's our choices. And that's come from the inside. So those thoughts come from the inside. And so if we're going to change, it's not your mom's fault, it's not your dad's fault, it's not your genes' fault, it's our choices. Health, we have to change what happens on the inside first. Health is an inside out thing. And that's why we focus on your spine and your nervous system. We need each of you recommendations. We, we put a care plan together. The care plan is meant to be finished on time. Does that make sense? Like don't stretch out, like your rhythm of your adjustments is incredibly important. We miss an adjustment, let's say we have got three times a week, we go miss an adjustment, we're back a week in momentum there, and we can't, we lose momentum. End of our care plan, hit our And then we get as a so green grass in our body there. And it doesn't matter how.
I can detoxify, I can give you all brand new soil for that brown grass. But if less that, if that grass focus on the nervous system. Number two, and these are the critical things, all of our nutrition is based on okay. So what we mean by that is, is that a lot of times you're like, well, what do I eat? I said, maybe what we should focus on, what do we stop eating first? And then add in what we should eat. Because what happens if we stop eating some of the bad stuff, then there's nothing left and you're like, well, I guess I gotta eat this. And it makes it pretty simple that way. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of, as opposed to give me the diet plan, give me the, step, the exact steps to do. So I find that things work best in threes. Because a lot of times, if I give you a big long list of like 20 things to eat, you're just gonna get overwhelmed and we're not gonna do them. Um, and you know, you might do it for a day, but if it's not in your war plan and you know, like you open your cabinet and then all that other stuff is in there, then we're gonna still have challenges. So first of all, fats. Our number one thing that our goal of our nutrition program is all about reducing inflammation, okay? It's not about fixing something, it's about reducing inflammation. Your body knows how to fix things as long as it's your body building. So our, all pain that we have is from one thing and that's inflammation. Nothing causes pain except for inflammation. This is an important key concept. Somebody says, my neck hurts. I'm like, it's not that your neck hurts, you have inflammation in your neck. My, my, my body aches, I must be getting older. No, you have inflammation in your body. Um, you know, I cut myself, I have a splinter in my finger. No, it's, and it hurts. It's not the splinter in your finger that hurts, it's the inflammation in there. And the number one thing, the problem that we have now is fats, okay? We've been told for years, that we should have a low fat diet. So one of the problems is, is that when we have a low fat diet, you know, our doctors tell us to take canola oil, they, they say safflower oil, all these, like these vegetable oils. Those oils are incredibly inflammatory oils. So in your book, there's actually a list, the Align Your Health book, there's a complete list of all the fats, the bad fats to avoid. There's also a list of good fats. So that's, if you're gonna focus on one thing, I, talk, I, I want you to focus on an oil chain. Okay, we need to just change our fats. And if once we start mastering our fats, then we can really move on to the next step. And so sometimes people are like, well, I just want all the steps. But let's just let's just figure this out. Because we're not about a quick fix. We're about long-term reproducibility for the rest of your life, okay? I want you to become a student of this. And then as you learn these things, I want you to teach them to other people. Because if you can teach it, then you can do it. Does that make sense? And so like in your, I need you to read the, the your Align Your Health book. One of the big keys on this is, is that it's broken down beautifully. There's 13 chapters. Just read a chapter a week. And I encourage you not to eat, read more than one chapter a week because then you just kind of blow through it. And if you're a fast reader, great, highlight it. But as you're going through it, like try to speak, speak it into somebody else because if you can speak it into somebody else, not only can you change their life, but you can actually, it becomes reinforced. Because remember what we say to ourselves, what we say out loud becomes our truth. So if we say, hey, we're not gonna eat canola oil, for example, then we, we actually will stop, we'll have to think about it next time we see something with the canola oil, because we're like, I, I don't eat canola oil. And then we actually have to make a values decision there, and we'll become much more powerful doing it the more we speak it out loud. So the first thing is, is, is changing, it's the oil change, getting rid of like the, 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 one of the things that we find is you wanna look on back of the package, anything that's hydrolyzed, Right? You'll see hydrolyzed, any vegetable oils, any processed, most processed foods have these oils. They're incredibly inflammatory, they're, they're, they're industrial process, they're hard for your body to actually eat, I mean digest. So it's hard for it to actually excrete there too. You don't get the same energy from it and it gums up the machinery. So we wanna start replacing it with good healthy fishes, uh, like especially like salmon. Uh, we wanna start having like coconut oils, um, if you don't like salmon, there's a whole list of other things. Good raw nuts. Remember when we're talking about nuts, if we roast the nuts, we just we turn that fat into a bad fat. Um, and also when we roast the nuts, we break down all the good proteins in there too. So raw nuts are really important. So I know the salty, crunchy nuts that we find at the bars and stuff like that, they're really good. Stay away from those, okay? Those resources are in there. We also have other resources available. We have a Nutrition 101 class 
and we can't cover all this information, but it's all on the website at, at, on the YouTube. So start taking little classes as you're driving around, doing things. Start programming your mind with this information. We've done the work for you on there. Second thing is sugar. So sugar right now just is, is, is really important at this time in history. Uh, I had a discussion with my, my uh, uh, a kid the other day, he was a teenager, and this teenager was saying, well, we, we, we're just gonna wear, the plan is just to wear a mask. And I'm like, okay, so why? Well, so we don't get sick. And I said, well, okay, so what, 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 when does the government get to tell us what we get to do? He goes, well, like we wear helmets, right? We all wear helmets when if we're riding a motorcycle, that's, and, and we all just do that. I said, helmets, we do that. We all wear seatbelts. Like the government cares about us because they make us do those things and because of that. And I said, well, if the government cared about us, why wouldn't they actually ban sugar? Think about it. What if they ban sugar in the United States? I think there'd be a revolution, first of all, right? Because we have 75 million people that are either diabetic or pre-diabetic that's gonna kill 75 million people. It's more than COVID would ever do. But we don't have this urgency because we're not seeing them drop dead. But guess who the people in the hospitals are? The people with diabetes, right? And guess what happens when we eat sugar? It suppresses our immune system by 75% for up to eight hours after we eat it. So you have that butterfinger, and for the next hour, you are a walking receptacle of viruses. Think about that. That's about personal. What if the, the government decided to, I don't know, ban liquor, right? Right? What if they ban liquor? What if they said we're going to ban fast food? Or like, like, but think of what would happen. Would our population be healthier or sicker? Yeah. It would be healthier. Do you think people would live, live a longer, healthier life? Right. Yeah. So what we want to start thinking about is we. You guys just agreed with me that those things are not conducive to health. The number one thing is sugar. Sugar creates. Diabetes, it creates inflammation. They actually, the Time Magazine did an article and they said that the number one cause, okay, check this out, of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, sugar is the number one, is the number two cause of inflammation, and it could be argued number one cause. The reason why I don't have sugar as number one there to start eliminating from our diet is the hardest thing because it's addictive. In fact, when you look at rats, rats actually will, will, will choose sugar over cocaine. They actually did studies, they're like, okay, we'll give you sugar or cocaine, and the rats are like, I don't like cocaine, I want sugar. Because we're biologically designed to create sugar. We have to raise our blood sugar, we, have, we only have one hormone, insulin, that lowers it. Like, we weren't designed to have sugar in our diet there. Just because people are like, well, it's sugar's natural. I'm like, well, have you ever seen cane? Like, try eating sugar from sugar cane. Like, it's a lot of work. Like, if that's the only sugar that I could get, I wouldn't do that. And like, go back, you know, a thousand years, two thousand years, they didn't have knives, they'd have to chip it away with your obsidian chip or something like that, and you'd be gnawing it, but your teeth would fall out. So the point is this, fats, we need to change our fats. We need to start removing our omega-6 fats, all right? Those are the processed, homogenized, or hydrolyzed oils, um, and we replace them with healthy oils. One of the easiest ways to reduce inflammation is with omega-3s. My firm belief is that everybody every day should be taking omega-3s on a regular basis. Um, in fact, you, you can actually reduce, the, there was one study that said you reduce um, Alzheimer's by 600% just by keeping your omega-3 ratios right. And they're estimating by 2040 that one or, per, one or two people at the age of 65 won't even know their own name right now because of Alzheimer's disease. So it's that important. The third thing is toxins. What's the number one toxin most people are exposed to? Do you guys know? Their medications. Like 56% of the people in the United States are taking a daily medication. Think about that. Is there any medication that doesn't have a side effect? Like not one. Like that's why you, that's why you see that big long list there. So we, we take a, a, a medication to try to fix the side effects of a toxic deficient lifestyle. It doesn't make sense. Right, and so we also start looking at pesticides. We have to go organic. There's our body was never designed to actually to, to digest to digest toxins. I mean to digest pesticides and herbicides. There, we start to have to start changing our personal care products. All those things are in there. But what I want you to start thinking about is their fats, our sugars, and our toxins. And it's not a meal plan there, but I want that consciousness to start uh, being pervasive there. 
So when we talk about the meats, we always talk about what do cows eat, right? Think about this, what do cows eat? Grass. Grass. Yeah, the, the cows eat grass, right? So like, so when cows eat grain, what happens to them? Why do they feed them grain? Fat them they want to have fat cows, right? So when we eat grain, like breads and pastas and cereals, and what happens to us? Fat. We become fat cows, right? <laughs> and and we're, we're wondering why, we're like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to do a good job, and why am I fat? It's because I'm eating like a cow. If you want to be a thin cow that never goes to market, right? They don't want to, like, we want to have, we want to eat as, as much grass as possible. Now, I'm not going to suggest you go out to a field, but the point is, is that the, the important thing is these grains have high levels of omega 6s in them. And so when they, a cow eats grains, what ends up happening is, is they become inflamed. Because of that, it suppresses their immune system. That's why they have to have all the antibiotics that they do. To be otherwise, they're going to like they, they get sick and die there. So they don't have to give healthy cows antibiotics. So the other thing is, is that if you eat a cow that's inflamed, you become inflamed. But they, it, it, it's what they call bioaccumulation. The, 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 you take something that's accumulated in another animal and you eat a bad meat, then it actually has a much greater impact on you than if you just had a, a I don't know a piece of Wonder Bread or something like that. Now, the, inter the interesting thing is, I always tell people this. I only eat grass-fed meat. Um, I only eat free-range eggs. Um, and, and, and I don't need to have a Fred Flintstone T-bone steak. Does that make sense? You don't need to have that much protein. So some, I would rather have you go vegetarian uh, than eat bad meat. Okay, you just can't undo the damage that's caused by unhealthy meat there. So that would be one of the, my suggestions, is be very conscious of the meats that we eat there. We talked about sugar. Here's the bad, right? People always ask me, well, what's sugar? Like, uh, how about agave? And I'm like, sugar. Uh, honey, honey's natural. Honey's, the, well, do you know what you have to do to get honey in the wild? First of all, you gotta find a beehive, right? And then you gotta fight through the bees to get the beehive. I mean, that's why the bears get it. So unless you're covered with like fur and you got big old claws, it's a lot of work to be able to get honey. And then guess what happens? When that honey's gone, guess what happens? You gotta find another honey hive or whatever they're called, a beehive, right? So it's very rare. Maple syrup, oh my gosh, do you know how much work it takes to get maple syrup out of a tree? So we think have to think about the, the amount of work that we have we would have to do to be able to get those things. Each the, the each level away from natural, the the worse off it is for us. Okay? So the ugly, this is the, the good is like right now is what we call stevia, xylitol, erythritol. They don't raise your blood sugar levels. They don't have, they don't raise your insulin levels there. Um, the only thing that I would say on xylitol um, is that if you eat too much of it, you'll get the runs. So, but um, these are good, very good alternatives that like if somebody's got a sweet tooth, that's a, what we call good, better, best, right? The, the good is just like, just do this. Make a shift, a lateral shift there. Better is, hey, like, don't, don't like, you know, please your sweet tooth. Um, and so the, the worst thing is aspartame, right? The, 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 the fake sugars there, like NutraSweet, Sucralose, those things are, those are neurotoxins. So do you remember what controls the fun? Where does monk fruit fall into that? Put it right here. It, it's, it's like in between there. It's, it's not, it's, not, it's, it, it's kind of like a good bet. It's a, it's a good in between there. It doesn't sugar as much. Mm -hmm. um, I just find that, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, I just love my cookies, I love this. And I'm like, no, your cookies love you. Does that make sense? Like your brain loves your cookies, your body doesn't love your cookies. And so what happens is when you start to, it's like that person that's like, I'm just gonna have like a, like a, um, like what's it, like Michelob light, you know, I'm an alcoholic, but I'm just gonna have Michelob light instead of a Michelob, you know what I mean? Like, or I'm gonna have a light cigarette, you know, camel lights rather than a camel cigarette, you know? Um, the point is, is that what we need to do is break that emotional addiction and the physical addiction to sugar there. These things are, are neurotoxins. Problem is, guess what, uh, yes? Was it, at one point, was, did, was stevia bad for you? Uh, well, no, I don't no. think so. You know, there was some stuff out there for a while that said it, but no. Uh, Do you have like a white paper or something to tell people that? Because when I try to tell them, they're like, don't. You know, they yeah. don't believe me. It's, that's when the NutraSweet or Splenda, because Splenda came out thinking it was better than yeah, so the look, blue it, one. Or no, common sense says putting a neurotoxin into your body is not a good thing. 
Um, and remember, neurotoxin is toxic to your nervous system, mm -hmm. and your nervous system controls the function of your entire body. All they have to, you can Google it, you can go on to green med, um, uh, uh, greenmedinfo.com, um, and there's a, all the listings of all the research on aspartame and sucralose, and there's a huge story, you know, that's probably just as big as this whole corona thing right now, yeah. um, about <laughs> this, these, these, these sweeteners there. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are also, guess what they are? Right. Sugar. 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 This yeah. is sugar. sugar. Breads, pastas, cereals, they, they convert into sugar. That's what you have to think about. It's not what goes into your mouth, but what your body converts it into there. So this is the toxin aspect that we really want to look at, okay? So that we, there's what the, the Environmental Working Group has what's called their clean 15 of their dirty dozen. So you don't have to go um, organic on everything. Because like when we look at the clean 15, sweet corn, the things that have husks and really thick rinds on them that you would peel off, those are things that you don't necessarily have to go um, organic on. You know, that, But when we start looking at the strawberries are almost every year one of the top ones. Like basically, have you, you guys ever had a strawberry plant at your house? Yes. And you get like four or five strawberries off of it every year and you're like, I watered it, I did it. It's hard to grow a strawberry plant, right? Um, you know, as you're uh, buying organic goods, just don't even vary on it. Like we actually did a, 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 had a, a, an experiment in the office once where we took an apple and we, we soaked it in um, uh, like a, an acidic water. Mm -hmm. And after about 20 minutes, you could actually see the, the, the yellow from all the pesticides that were still stuck to the apple after it had come out of the store there. Think about that. Most of the time we just stick it in our mouth and eat it. We don't think it's, about it. It's the difference too, because my aunt grows would go out there and would just pick them straight off and just eat them. They taste so much better yeah. than the ones you buy at the store. <laughs> so what are our three things that we're going to fix? First thing is what? Yeah. Fats. Yes. And what type of fats do we want to have? Good yes. fats. Which are? I mean, salmon. What's that? Salmon. salmon or like, and where can we find a list of all the good fats? Yeah. In your book. And who has a book? So everybody has a book, no excuses, right? Yeah. All right, so remember what kind of the bad fats they're called, omega, omega six. sixes, right? So those are the bad flats, do they cause, inf do they, do they, and those are the ones that cause what? Inflammation. inflammation, and inflammation causes what? Pain. Pain, Pain. exactly, Pain. all right? So we're on the right track there. So the second thing that we want to change is what? Sugar. Sugar, Sugar. and what does it do to the immune system? bring it down. Right, and you will know this answer this question, probably the two of you guys. What does sugar feed in your body first? What kind of cells? Do you remember? G cells. Cancer cells. Yes. Cancer cells eat sugar eight times more than regular cells. Wow. So when you're like, it, it's so like when you, somebody say, I just don't want to get cancer, well then don't eat sugar. Uh -huh. Because not only does it feed the cancer cells eight times more, and it also suppresses your immune system by 75%, it's a perfect storm. So that's when they look at people with, that are diabetics. The rate of actually becoming, like have, having cancer is through the roof compared to somebody that doesn't eat sugar, okay? Third thing that we want to change is what? Toxins. Toxins. And we, the way that we, the number one toxin is what? Um, that people are, have to, their prescription yeah. meds to fix the problem that they created by not following those three rules, right? Yeah. Second thing is, is that we want to, the, 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 as far as the toxins, we want to have the clean 15 and the dirty, Dozen. good, 12. dirty dozen, yeah, yeah dirty 12. 12, good. All right, so that's the simple part, okay? And so that's what's on right now, okay? Just go through your day. The easy thing that you can do is look on the back of your, um, uh, uh, like a like a label. So I want you to start being label readers. So look at the number of grams of carbs that are on everything that you eat. Divide it by five, and that's the number of teaspoons of sugar that were in there. So today I had a person that was had very low blood sugar. They had passed out. I went and got them uh, an apple juice from next door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that and I had them drink that apple juice, um, and they perked right up. On the back of the app, the reason why I chose apple juice is because there was 47 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't that the most? It's one of the highest, yeah. So that they had almost 10 teaspoons of sugar, which is more than a soda pop, that went with more than a Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And what do we feed our kids? No. Apple juice, right? <laughs> you know, like we feed the, anytime you start looking at the back. Now, the other thing that's important is also look at the grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. So that, like, if you have, let's say, 
um, like a, a blueberry, like if you have a cup of blueberries, that's, that's 16 grams of carbohydrates, but it has nine grams of fiber. So when, whatever gram of fiber that you have, it, you can subtract it from the number of carbohydrates. So we wanna have high fiber, low sugar, and so we start looking at like a, a banana has almost no fiber in it, but a cup of banana has 35 grams of carbohydrates. So one of the things that we, in the, in the book, they'll talk about the glycemic index. You can actually Google glycemic index foods, and they'll actually have listings of foods that have very high, that, that are high in the glycemic index. Guess what's one of the number one ones on the glycemic index? Banana. Beer. beer. Oh. Yeah. And guess what people that drink a lot of beer get? Um, beer gut. Beer gut, right? Yeah. That's why it's a beer belly. Because it, 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 has, it has wheat, and it has alcohol, and it has a sugar in it, and it just raises our blood sugar immediately. The yeast. Yeah, and the yeast you, in there. Even though you drink like a low carb beer? Yeah, well, so here's the thing. Every once in a while is fine, but it's just like anything else. It's the, yeah. it's the, it's the every everyday rule kind of is not a, like a good thing. Even if you wanted to exercise every day, eventually your body would get worn down. Does that make sense? Like variability is, is the key. So the second thing, the, the next one, essentially that we're gonna talk about, so we talked about max mind, we talked about max nervous system, we talked about max, like max oxygen. So the thing that's important about exercise, and it's not about getting a good body, it's not about being thin, it's about being healthy, okay? And that's the key. When you exercise, it increases oxygen. So what, what, what is, like if I put a pillow under your face, what would happen? You, you would suffocate, right? Because you don't have enough what? Oxygen. Oxygen, right? So when you're not exercising, guess what you're doing to the cells of your body? You're suffocating your body. It's not about like having six pack abs. It's about getting your body the oxygen that it needs so that, 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 that it can actually turn the energy from the food that you eat into energy so that we can have vitality. And why do you think Starbucks, Pete's Coffee, you know, all these rock stars, you know, all these, these energy drinks that are out there, it's because people are starved from oxygen. In fact, they said that, I was reading an article, they said they, that almost 50% of kids can't even qualify to be in armed services because they're that out of shape. They actually have pre-boot camp, boot camp, for people to actually be able to go to boot camp because they're so fat and out of shape, they can't even make it through boot camp. They don't even let them go. That's half of our children. Guess where our population is gonna be in another decade, two decades, three decades. And they're already finding that millennials right now actually have more health problems than their counterparts 10 years earlier. So we have a sicker population. In fact, this is the first year that, that, that has been estimated that won't outlive their parents. And that's scary. They drink a lot of coffee and uh, the, 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 the foods that they eat, the stress the that they have, that, of the life, it's the lifestyle, right? The video games, the video the games, playing right? Outside so, and yeah, so that's why, I don't know if you guys have ever seen every day, Dr. Doss does an exercise video, right? Literally every single day, he does an exercise video here. And he, he outlets our 12 minute workout. Anybody can do the workout. Like literally anybody can do the workout. And, and the key was, is that you don't have to go exercise for hours. You just have to, like, eat. what if you made a commitment to yourself that two days a week, I just watch them on Facebook, write down the exercise there, and spend the next 10 minutes of my day actually going through an exercise where I get my, get my body the oxygen that it needs so that it can live as long as I want, so I can have the energy that I want, so that I can be the very best father, mother, aunt, sister, brother. Does that make sense? So I get the energy to be able to win my race in this life. So we also have what we call, um, where we go? Max T3, right? You guys got the Max T3 videos, you got like the, the bookmark there. It's like, like, like you can go online anywhere. If you, if you don't, if you wanna follow somebody and follow what plans, like uh, you just go onto your phone and you can watch, you can go onto your TV and watch it. You know, just Chromecast it right up to the TV there. It's that easy. Is and it on been, that website or Max T3? Max-T3.com. So if you even have the DVD right now, I think you do. I do. Uh, just go on the back. There's a code on there that you can actually follow it. So in this office, we like you know usually we have workout classes on Monday nights and Wednesday nights. Um, we have the videos online for you guys to watch. So our goal is for it to be able to give you the tools. But like, guess what? If our thoughts are like, I don't like to exercise. Guess what you don't do? You don't exercise. Does that make sense? Like, like if you're like, I don't, I, I, I like, I'm too old to exercise. You'll find you're like, well, that's a he's moving too fast. You know, you, like you don't understand. I got bad knees. I got bad hips. I got bad back. 
And you just have to do your very best at where you're at at that time. Does that make sense? You don't have to be better than anybody else. This isn't a competition. This is a competition. The biggest challenge, have you ever noticed that the only thing that causes depression is when we compare ourselves to somebody else? Have you ever noticed that? Like we get depressed if like we're, we're where we think we should be. Does that make sense? Not where we are. We, we don't know what, what that person's like, but we can only, if we start basing it on somebody else, which once again is an outside in thing, mm -hmm. then we lose the ability or the, 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 to be able to take responsibility ourselves for where we are. We compare ourselves to what we're doing today. And so what we, with the war plan, the beautiful thing is, is that I found that like I, like, like with my work plan, I put I was going to run on these certain particular times. Well, I, I kept on missing it, and I realized that uh, the day before I was going, I was staying up too late because I had put to put work on projects at that time. So it, it set up a, a problem for me to get to my workouts at a particular time. So look at what's happening. Not that you can't do it, but the strategies that we have aren't working for it. And that's what I'm going to encourage you to do with your work plan there. All right, last one is this. We gotta be looking at our toxins. Our toxins are the silent killer because we don't see them. Does that make sense? Like you know, the canaries in the gold mine. They used to have these canaries in the gold mines and the mines because they, the, the 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 miners would not see the carbon monoxide levels, and then they wait till the canaries would fall over and die, and then they would have everybody run out of the mines. The canaries in the gold mines right now are our kids. You know. Uh, like almost 40% of children right now are on a medication that they'll be taking for that they have a diagnosis that they'll have for the rest of their life right now. We have more obese children than we've ever had in the history of the world. We have kids are they're trying to put them on cholesterol medication and blood pressure medication. You know, kids, in fact, almost 30% of children, like 18 year olds, you know, that had died in, uh, when they had done autopsies on them when they came back in this study uh, from Iraq. They actually had heart disease at 18 years old. Guess what, and all of a sudden they have their first heart attack at 50, and they're like, oh, well, he just had heart disease. No, it's been building since they're 18. So we have to realize toxins are all around us. Toxins cause inflammation. Inflammation cause heart disease, and cancer, and all these different things there. Toxins, we're gonna find them in our personal care products. We have a list here of personal care products that we recommend. Uh, that we just found out over time. And just talk to Cheryl or any of the team members, they'll get it for you. Uh, we look at our, our, home, our, our home cleaning products, right? The, 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 did you know that when you open the, um, the, the, think about last time you did the dishwasher, okay? And you open the dishwasher, what happened to your glasses? They fogged up, right? Did you know that that's chlorine gas coming out? Wow. I guess how long is, they estimate that that Chlorine gas stays floating around in your house for up to one to two days. So we're inhaling chlorine gas. What if we made a small little change to our um, to, to our the, like our the, the detergent that we use to do our dishes that didn't have chlorine in it, and then still wash the dishes, but then what, what's the compound effect of that year after year after year over the next 20 or 30 years there? Personal care products, household cleaning. Uh, please tell me you don't use Teflon. Nobody, nobody, like if you have Teflon, like literally, don't even give it to somebody, just put it in the landfill. Uh, like there's, a, there's, there's it's, it's literally outgasses and toxic for you. And if you know those little scrapes, remember like my, my brother used to use the fork in the Teflon pan? And the little pieces like that would come up, and like, hey, where did those little pieces of Teflon that run the Teflon pan go? They go into and they never leave and they leach out for the rest of your life, okay? So what my point on this is, is that the, way, the air that we live, we have, this is a super fun cleanup site in Santa, in Santa Clara County. We have more super fun cleanup sites than any other county in the entire country, okay? My point on telling you this is that we're exposed to toxins on a daily basis, but we don't do anything about it because we don't feel it, right? And it accumulates, it bioaccumulates over time. And so that's why one of the things I always tell people is like, look, you know, First thing is we start feeling brain fog, we start feeling, you know, like inflammation, we start feeling uh, like achiness throughout our body there. Um, we have digestive issues. One of the things I always tell people is, you know, start on a detox program. Like it's a simple thing that you can do. Typically people go for about 30 to 90 days, depending on age, depending on health status there. 
but it's a very simple, easy step that you can do. Now, not, you don't have to start off right now, but remember, it's toxicity or deficiency, right? So, like, look, if you don't want to work on your, you know, uh, you know, sufficiency, maybe we just your strength right now is working on the uh, toxicity, right? So maybe just that's the area that we work at. Maybe we want to we can start learning about the, you know, the sugars and the fats and the toxins. But maybe we can flip it upside down, and if that's what you want to work on. Either way, we're going to have to work on it though. So, Dr. Goss said something that was really powerful. He said, "Probability versus possibility." Okay. So knowing what we just talked about right now. Okay. So the the probability that of everybody in this room right now is that we this probably live to 79.3 years. If we do everything that everybody else is doing, the probability, and actually life expectancy has gone down, so I think it's like 77 years now, but the probability is we'll make it to 77 years. Now, are those going to be glorious final you know, years of vitality, or are we just inching along? You know, the average person, they, they get to 69, that's the end of the average health and life, healthy life expectancy, and so we spend the next 10 years just trying to stay alive. And, then, and I see that with my in-laws, right? You know, they just spend every day, they, they know their doctors by heart, um, you know, spend every day there. Uh, so the probability is this, we do this type of thing, okay? Now imagine if we changed our thoughts, right? If we, if we, if we took care of our nervous system, got our spine corrected, and, and maintain the function of our nervous system so it could heal, repair, and regenerate you. And then we gave you good, nutritious food, and we changed our fats, changed our sugars, changed and removed the toxins from our food. <coughs> and then we somehow find, found the ability to exercise two, three times a week in a way that's genetically congruent for us. Not a type of exercise that wears our body out, but a type of exercise that strengthens and tones us and makes us. Uh, it gives us oxygen to our lungs and to our cells there. And then we're not having to take medications because we're doing these things. We change our personal care products. We change our home care products there. What is the possibility of our life expectancy? Do you see it's that? And that's what gets me fired up every single day. Like, I, I don't see where you're at. I see what's possible for where you're at. That's why, you know, like, I, I'm like, how's your home care exercise? People are like, oh, I'm really, you know, super busy right now. You don't understand. I got a little stressed out. I'm like, Okay, great, let's do it. Does that make sense? Because I see the possibility, the potential of every single person that's in here. So our whole goal tonight is we don't want to stick with the probabilities. Does anybody want to be a the probability statistic, right? No, we want to be a possibility statistic. Now the thing is, is right now, we don't have a healthcare crisis in the United States. We don't like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, you know, autoimmune issues. Those aren't healthcare problems. Those are life care problems. Those are lifestyle. We have a lifestyle crisis. And that's the battle that your war plan helps you fight and win every single day there. That's the battle that we're starting right now. Here's your battle plan, by the way. It's right here. This is this is what the Sun Tzu's uh, art of war, right? This is the art of war of fighting for your life. And it's it, it's going to take effort. It's going to take work, right? You like, but. Think about the work that goes into somebody doing chemo. That's a lot of work, right? Like somebody like having to like you know deal with diabetes, like having to give themselves shots every day and so on and so forth. Like this is this is an investment in your time there. So here's the secret. I should put the secret on there. This is the secret for everything, okay? And this is what I have found, and this is we put together that we under, we understand is what we call the three-legged stool, okay? This is what gives our patients results in the office. The people that put their, 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 their just follow the three-legged stool, it transforms everything. The first leg in the stool is this. You know, it, it, it's your lifestyle, okay? See, what we want to look at is our lifestyle. So you're either, remember, you're either toxic or deficient. So here's how we, remember our, 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 our spine is just a reflection of our life. Does that make sense? So if we're going to change our spine, we're going to have to change our life. We're going to have to change the way that we sit, the way that we sleep, the way that we stand, the thoughts that we have on a daily basis, the way that we move, the things that we put in our body or don't. So what I want you to start, your first action step in your lifestyle for me is this. I want you to create a page, okay? And, I, and on one side, it's going to be start doing. 
but on the other side, it's going to be stop doing. It's going to be your start doing, stop doing list. You don't beat yourself up on that, and you get to choose which things you want to start doing, which you want to stop doing. And if we can start to work on that list, sometimes they're like, hey, I should start um, exercising. Well, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to put it on my start doing list. And keep it in a place where you can see it on a regular basis there. And then there's something gratifying, you get to check something off. Like, you're like, I nailed it. I've been doing that. I own that, right? And so what you'll start to do is you'll start to get this to have small wins. A lot of times we beat ourselves up for so long because we're all trying to hit the home runs, the grand slams, but we're not even laying down any bumps. You know what I mean? We're not we're not trying to hit a single there. So what small singles, small wins, because if you do things on a consistent basis, right, and you get a, enough small wins, what do you start seeing yourself as? A winner, right? Yeah. And that's what we want. We, you know, somewhere along the line, you know, on the day you were born, a champion was born. Does that make sense? Like, like you had the sum of a sperm and an egg came together, and that sperm beat everybody else, and you were the winner of that one, right? <laughs> right? And, and so, like, and like, this amazing intelligence came together, put everything together, and next thing you know, you were born, and everybody, what did everybody say? Look at Judy is. You can do anything. You're, like, amazing. Look at, like, he's walking. Like, what a big deal that is, right? Like, you even think, like, today, like, you're, like, you're walking, like, Wow, look at me, I'm walking. No. Like, you know, like he's talking. He, look, he can feed himself. You know what I mean? Look, you can read the, the, uh, and now we're like reading everything, right? And we're now it's amazing. And then somewhere around the line, somebody told us we were a loser, right? Somebody told us we weren't good enough, we weren't strong enough at something. So I need you to remember who you are, that you want those small wins. You can start seeing ourselves as winners. Our start doing, stop doing list, those are the things that are that's going to transform ourselves. So I and so when you go up to a situation, I'm I'm a black and white person, okay? Like that's how it makes my brain work because I have a tendency to see too many things in gray, right? Like well, this situation's got like that. So you come up to something and you're like, hey, there's a cookie on the table, and you're like, hey, I really want that cookie. First question I ask myself: toxic? So is this going to make me toxic and deficient, or is this going to make me sufficient or pure? Uh, toxic and deficient. Okay, I have a choice. Do I want to be toxic and deficient? Not really, right? Does that, does that make sense? Like, you're like, I really want pizza. Is it going to make me toxic and deficient or sufficient and pure? Okay, I'll have the salad, right? And it, like, nobody's ever, like, have you ever, like, had a whole salad and you're like, or no, like, you eat the whole pepperoni pizza and, like, afterwards, you're like, I really shouldn't have done that, right? I feel horrible. And nobody ever eats a salad and they're like, I feel horrible for eating that salad except for the Chipotle or something, right? You know? <laughs> but the point is, is that, like, like, like it, it, there, there are rules that we can start putting into our mind there. So we want us to become sufficient and pure. So we start looking for sufficient and pure choices, okay? So this is like you know, how you can go around your life. You don't judge things. You don't judge whether you're good or bad. Toxic or efficient, sufficient and pure. Cut the sugar, crank up the fat, clean up your protein and caring about your nutrients, okay? This is a really important one because most of us are so deficient for such a long period of time that you need you know, vitamins and minerals to actually make all the processes in your cells work. And we're like, hey, I'm eating right, but you haven't done it for 20 years, and so now you're deficient. It's like that person that's like, hey, I'm saving money, and I'm, but you've been living on credit cards for the last 20 years. Like, why am I not rich right now? Well, because you gotta pay off your tax debt, okay? And unfortunately, the world that we live in many times, that the foods are deficient in minerals and vitamins there. It's just like, if you had to eat, like right now, if you had to, to get the same nutrient value from an orange, you would have to actually eat eight oranges that your grandparents would only have to eat one orange. Well, they take them before the life and then right. the nutrients, huh? Yeah, exactly. And you're like, but I'm eating oranges. You know, like the nutrient values and the minerals have gone down somewhere. So I used to say, you don't have to take a multi. I'm like, everybody has to take a multi. But make sure it's not like the centrum or something from like, mm -hmm. don't buy your, your 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 nutrients, your supplements, where you buy your drugs. Does that make sense? Don't buy your uh, nutrients and supplements where you buy your toilet paper, like in bulk. You know what I mean? Like, like buy them, like you want pharmaceutical grade, does that make sense? Like, 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 like professional grade nutrients that are from whole food sources. That's all you should ever have. And by the way, like the, the, the cheapest nutrient, actually the most expensive nutrient, that you take is the one that you don't absorb because it's just expensive urine at that time. Okay, so we're going to talk about nutrients in a second. 
So align your health book. This is your lifestyle plan right here, okay? It covers all five essentials. It gives you the tools that you need, the action steps that you need. And if you just want to all of a sudden start cooking everything in the world, there's recipes and meal plans in the back that you can follow that. If you want a simpler version, um, you know, uh, like let me know. Uh, we have them coming back in. I have a book called 21 Day Transformation. Um, and it's a, it's a simplified version there. You can have that too, all right? Your essentials. This is a, people are like, well, where do I start with my nutrients? I would just say start with the essentials. Like start with the essentials, the basic foundations. Um, we've done thousands of tests, lab tests, and what we found is that these are the things that people are most deficient in. We look at their most deficient and their, their daily vitamins, their multivitamins. Because like, it, 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 so what we did is we developed a multivitamin that's like specific for women and specific for men that addresses each individual nutrient need, but addresses the, the, based on the whole foods that you can actually absorb. Number two, there's an omega-3 in there, is what we call optimal omega. So optimal omega actually has the perfect ratio of omega-3 to the omega-6s. And it's not the bad omega-6s, they're also good omega-6s that you need to have. So the optimal omega is really great because it's a very balanced omega designed for optimal health. It also has the B complex in there. B vitamins or your stress vitamins or your metabolic vitamins are the ones that, that allow you to your metabolism. And they also are the same ones that actually allow to, that your detoxification mm -hmm. process to happen. Most people, because of gut issues that they have, are very deficient in B vitamins, and you just can't mount a good metabolism. The, the, I think the, the vitamin C is in there, uh, which is an antioxidant. See, oxidation is the process by which cells age. Oxidant. See, oxidation is a process by which cells age. And so the, the ox like rusting, like you see um, iron oxidizes and that's where it breaks it down. Oxidation damages the cells and it's, the oxidation happens because it, ex it gets exposed to what we call free radicals from the world that we look at all these toxins that we're exposed to, all these pesticides, all the inflammation. When we're inflamed, we're building free radicals in our body that are, that, and normally our body is so smart can make its own antioxidants, but because we've overwhelmed it by our lifestyle, we actually have to do something to be able to help this, like an insurance policy against that. Last one is magnesium. Magnesium is, is like a, like the energy one, but it also helps with digestion. Um, it's, it's like, I just did a talk a few months ago, and there was something like 204 reasons why you should take magnesium on a daily basis. And for muscles and nerves firing and you know like it so the essential packet is like what the basic essentials for health there uh, that would be my first recommendation as far as like nutrients and that's until we can get our lifestyle handled right like like when you're eating a perfect diet and you got it nailed you might not have to keep that because you'll be fine but up until then let's you know get this foundation here and build forward there the other thing that's important is crisis so a lot of times, obviously in here, a lot of people will come in and they have back pain or neck pain or so on and so forth. So in crisis, we actually put together, um, like, like this is a, what's called pure omega, and it's, it has a, like a tremendous amount of uh, anti-inflammatory herbs in there, but it's a very high concentration of, of, of omega-3s there, which is ma massively anti-inflammatory there. So that you should have a copy if, you, if somebody's in crisis, there's a copy of the protocol in your packet there of what to do and how to take it. This also has your, your pure inflammatics there, which is like the, the, the concentrated herbs. Because our goal is to, 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 which will reduce inflammation. And they're not, it's not in, they're not anti-inflammatories. They're pro-inflammatories, which means that they help your body move through that inflammatory process. See, inf inflammation is good because it's your body's repair process. It's the chronic inflammation that's bad. So we need to get, we're stuck many times, so it's basically we need to move through that process so that your body can actually heal. That's why when somebody takes um, like an anti-inflammatory, it damages the discs. Like a Tylenol damages the discs, damages the joints in your spine, and damages the hips. They, you know, they, they said it'll increase your rate of disc degeneration by 400%. And so when somebody says, hey, do I take aspirin or Tylenol? I'm like, neither. When I'm in pain, well, do something to help your body get through that process. Stop eating sugar, change your fats, get rid of the toxins there. And in the meantime, making, they, you know, go through that protocol. This is a, this has all kinds of like essential oils and things like that that are pro-inflammatory that will help you get through it. I'm not opposed to medications. 
but I'm opposed to medications taken to treat a symptom. Does that make sense? Or on a long-term basis. So that's the crisis care protocol there. I in You should have in your packet what I call my seven-day health reboot. Uh, it's that big, long list there. So a lot of times people are like, what do I do? Like, you know, it, I think it's this one. Right? It doesn't, it looks like this. Okay. So that, I, I actually updated it, put more information on there. So in the seven day health reboot, sometimes we, does anybody have any bad habits, by the way? <laughs> right, we have our routines, right? We have our patterns that we live our life. Um, and you know, we have our, we come home, we go to the counter, we, we get this little bag of chips over here, and then we have a glass of wine over here at this particular time, right? So it's our, where the power's in the pattern, and, and all habits are created. So what I, you know, we're addicted to sugar, and we know that it takes about a week to break that sugar addiction. So what I did is I put together the reboot protocol. That's, that's, um, here it says step one, up here it says step two. That one's the more evolved one, I'm gonna update this. But step two is a process, I mean, the step one that I, you guys have, is a process, it's this, it should go by this one. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave our ears for a second. But it's a process that we go through that um, allows you to become sufficient and, and, and pure in a very quick process, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we do is, is that we have to break that, so what we'll do is we'll have, you can have as many green vegetables as you want, by the way. You can like literally get a tray this big and just sit there all day and eat them. Just leave like I can't eat anymore, like until I feel like Jabba the Hutt from green vegetables, right? But the the point is, is that green vegetables they have to be raw during this time. Okay. The cool thing is, you like potato chips? Guess what? You're gonna love green vegetables because they got that crunch factor there, right? Problem is, is that um, the, the 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 so we'll have the green vegetables and then the, we'll have a combination of a clean source of protein, and we'll have like a clean, we'll, we'll, like a protein shake mixed in with the greens, like the green vibrance. So we're gonna have highly concentrated, pro, like healthy proteins and healthy greens, and we'll use that as shakes and you like three to four times a day. And while you're t eating as many of the group raw green vegetables, this is gonna start the detox process in your body. It's gonna kick your liver into gear to actually have it start working there. It's going to immediately start to break your sugar cravings there because there is no sugar in it. Does that make sense? And, it, and a lot of times we're like, okay, what's the diet? What do I have to cook? And it's going to take the stress away because you're not, it's like, you just do this. Does that make sense? And then we support it with the detox, like the daily detox, which you take your two pills in the morning, two pills at night, but that allows it to pull the toxins out of the cells because when you're losing weight, I've had people lose like eight to 10 pounds just in the first week and it's not even water weight because you're gonna be drinking half your body weight in ounces of water. So you're not losing water weight, you're actually losing real fat. I had one person lose almost 30 pounds in the first month. My mom, I pulled her out of the hospital and like she'd been in the hospital for almost four weeks. Remember the story on this? And, and like, I, like I, this is what I put her on. Like this is the first thing that I did. She lost 40 pounds and she got off all of her medications. They said she had congestive heart failure. And guess what? Her diagnosis disappeared. Because diagnosis is disappear when you're healthy. A diagnosis is a second or first tier problem. It's not a health problem. Where we don't deal with diagnoses in here because our, we, our job is to get people healthy there. And so what we also look at is, so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, and so this is, if you want to do this process, read through that, okay? And, and, and understand it, but it's, it's really powerful, and it's really our quick start because it makes a massive shift in, in somebody's energy, a massive shift in the inflammation, and a massive shift in how somebody feels. I did it, and it yeah. worked really, really well. I fell off after about six months, but yeah, I've, I lost like 15 pounds in the first month. I felt great. Yeah, and that, it's easy, to, it'll, it, and so have you ever noticed that like you do something and then it's hard to do it again the second time? It was hard. To do. Yeah. I tried to start and I've started three times and I have not yes. been able to make it through the second because time. Because our brain loves change. They love something new, something innovative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so what I want you to, it's, so on the, the, the Quick Start program, um, what it starts to do is in the next week, you can add a dinner in there, right? And then you learn how to cook dinners and, and then the next week you can add a lunch in there. Um, you can still have it. So nobody's ever hungry. I guarantee you're not going to be hungry. It's just, but it just frees you up. So what we need the to do is- The strange thing that was for me is um, 
when I actually ended up falling off multiple, I was at work because I was working a lot of hours. But um, the hard part for me at first is I was working a lot of hours when I first started it, uh-huh. and coming up and down the stairs, I was just dragging. It's like I was losing all this toxins and all this other stuff yeah. out of my system from doing it, and I was just, you know, it's like walking everywhere else was fine, but every time I went up and down yeah. the stairs, that was just it's, killing me. It's because your energy source convert re, was reconverting. Mm-hmm. So you were going from a sugar burner to a fat burner. Yeah. All right. So sugar burners, what they do is they they graze all day. Does that make sense? You're like you're going from meal to meal to meal. Hey, what are we gonna have for breakfast? Okay. Hey, what do you want to do for lunch today? Okay. What are we gonna have for dinner? Hey, are we gonna have a snack after dinner? How about a dessert after dinner? This is my bedtime treat. You know what I mean? Like we, we live our life for food. All right, that's what a sugar burner, a sugar burner sees a pie, gains weight, a fat burner eats a pie, goes to bed, and loses weight. Because your body burns, and that's what our job is, to turn you from a sugar burner to a fat burner. So what we have to do is make this fun for you, yeah. to cycle this next time around, okay? Yeah. And we'll talk about that. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about, uh, the, the, so we talked about the first part of the three-legged stool is going to be our lifestyle, okay? And we hopefully you guys got this. The second part, is the is, is what we call our home care okay our exercises the things that we do all of you guys received a home care that's not in red some of us are here in blue you have your traction this is an arc of life regenerating tool it's designed to regenerate that arc of life kind of important because 100 percent of the nerves from your brain come right through that that's why we call it the arc of life there and what it does is it stretches all the muscles um, and it tractions and it hydrates the discs in your neck there uh, Second, we have our wobble discs in there. We're going to talk about wobble discs. We have our head weights. Our head weights are designed to retrain your brain on how to pull, uh, to, to hold itself in position. It's, it's like a, it's, it's an exercise. It's not just a weight that pulls down. It retrains your brain and your nervous system to hold that head back. Remember, forehead posture is one of the greatest predictors of mortality. So as that head comes forward, compresses the heart, compresses the lungs, stretches the spinal cord. So it's in- important we can't make the changes that we want to make in your neck you can't have the goals and the outcomes that you want to have unless you do what you need to do to be able to get those results you have blocks and rolls um, did anybody like put their rolls on the first time and they're like hey this feels really good I'm just gonna sleep with the rolls like that for the rest of my life no, so, no. The, the more your neck is reversed the more damage in your neck the longer it's going to take but look it's like a it's like, like a, it's like a retainer right you do your home care exercises, they're, they're warming your spine up to get it prepared, um, and then you cool it down on the rolls there, and then it's gonna mold like a shrinky dick, okay? It's gonna mold like, you know, you have a piece of gum that's all hot, you can't get it off your fingers, right? But you put it in the freezer, yeah, with that thing. And so a lot of times if we're going to put the rolls there without having doing our home care exercises, it's like you're trying to play with a, like a rigid piece of plastic, just heat that plastic up and then it's gonna mold around those rolls. Uh, one thing I will tell you though, is the people that do it on a regular basis and incorporate it, we wanna get about 20 minutes minimum a night. So just start off, look, you know, just start off with one minute. If you're not gonna do 20 minutes, just do one minute. But if 20 minutes is when the ligaments start to change, okay? And then, um, and so then, you know, just build. Uh, but the people that do it on a regular basis, they can't sleep without it now. I have people that they have a, one for their mother's house, one for their you know, like their vacation house. Like they just they can't sleep without it. They don't sleep with a pillow anymore. And what happens is that nighttime, guess what? Every other system in your body shuts down, except one system, which is your nervous system. But don't you think it'd be a good idea to have a nice curve in your neck so that your nervous system can communicate with your body and repair and regenerate and heal it? So that's why that's so important there. Uh, if you have any questions about where they go, always ask us, okay? You know, the biggest mistake most people do is they think, oh, it's supposed to go small, it's supposed to go in the small of my low back. It's not. If you're waking up and you're like, oh, my low back hurts after sleeping with the rolls, you probably have it in the wrong place, okay? It's supposed to go. Yeah, so everybody, next time you're at the table, ask me or ask Dr. Doss, and we'll look at your x-rays um, so that we know for a fact. Like, I don't, unfortunately, I know what your x-rays look like, but I don't have everybody memorized. Uh, um, all right, so... Here's why wobble's important, okay? This little wobble, red wobble disc, red blue wobble disc that you have, you're like, it's oh, kind of stupid, right? Like, I feel like an idiot just sitting going like that. So that is a disc regeneration protocol, okay? It's designed to repattern, it's designed to cancel out your patterns of the day. 
So studies show that if you hold a position for 10 minutes or more, has everybody ever sat like this for 10 minutes during the day? Like day in and day out, right? Or like this, watching your Netflix or something like that. After 10 minutes, that becomes, your brain resets itself that that's the new normal, okay? So what the, the, what the wobble disc does is it allows you to reset what your new normal is. So guess what? When you wobble, it de increases the delivery of nutrition to your brain and your spinal cord. Good thing or bad thing? Mm. It's like a pump, right? And you're pumping good nutrition and oxygen to your brain there. It gives you cerebral spinal fluid, it massages your lungs, and it massages the heart. It's a full range of motion exercises that actually causes the inner part of your disc to shift. So if we're trying to change your spine. And a lot of times, if you think about it, like, like, a, 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 like your discs are like this, and the in between is like this marble. Well, if the marble's over here, that you have a curve in your spine, right? And you're not doing your wobbles. Well, the, we're not gonna be able to make those changes. We gotta get that disc, that marble in the middle to be able to start moving there. Um, and so we can't change the spine if somebody's not doing their wobbles there. It hydrates and inflates the disc, and we're gonna talk about this in a second. Oxygen stimulates more metabolism. Um, these, are all, these are all research findings. Nutrient, and it actually pumps lymph bringing white cells to an area of infection and bringing the toxins away from there. Um, and it's a great warm up. Check this out. By the, ad, by the time somebody is 12 years old, they've lost all the blood supply to their discs. So if we want to heal the discs, if we want to change the disc to change the spine, we have to wobble. The more we wobble, the better we're going to be. Not only does it help stabilize our spine, strengthen our spine, increase range of motion, hydrate your brain and your body, it's, it's one of the most crucial things in our body. That's why we have your wobble, uh, you know, like every single day. Uh, check this out, though. They did, they did this amazing study. They found if somebody wobbles for 500 days in a row, okay, they did this with MRIs, and, and they did 120 reps per day. So, like, they found that they could actually regenerate discs. You have degenerative discs? You can actually regenerate a disc by doing that. Like it's you just have to undo the damage that we did in the past. And but your body heals in rhythm. So when we know about your home care exercises, is that we that we got to do them every single day. And then somebody's like, well, I just missed a day. Well, it's almost like it's a shock. We got to go start back over again because we're retraining the nervous system how to hold your body. And we only have 20 or 30 years of doing it the wrong way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like, why would you know? Think about it, like I make an adjustment, we want that adjustment to hold it, it's your responsibility to keep it holding, all right? Now, in about two weeks or so, we're gonna bring the breath by platforms back, okay? We just have to clear out that back room once we get the x-ray done. Your vibration platforms are, it's like, are like, like superpowers for us. It allows us to be able to strengthen your spine, you'll use body weighting, and you'll be able to hold your spine and to be able to get stronger. Cool thing is, increases growth form by 361% on average. Do you know what growth hormone is? It's the thing that keeps you young. It's, a, it's your repair and regeneration hormone. It only happens when we're asleep and when we're doing what kind of exercise? Surge training exercise. The 12 minute exercise, it actually produces growth hormone. How cool is that? That's the one that you have to go to the, the doctor and they have to give you the injections and they're like $7,000 a shot and it's, you, know, you have the fake guys on TV. Testosterone increases by about 7% when you're doing vibration. Cortisol goes down there and pain reduces by up to 66% just by doing a session of vibe therapy. And also you get better spinal corrections, okay? I have seen that in the pain reduction because there have been times where, had I had not been on that vibe, mm -hmm. made all the difference for me. Yeah, and that's why it's killing me right now, uh, but just because of the number of people we can have in one place. So look guys, the third leg of the stool is this, is, is your rhythm, okay? So the, the, we have our, our lifestyle, right? Which, which you know, our spine is just a reflection of our lifestyle. Our exercises, which help us hold the adjustments, but the rhythm of your adjustments is key. So when I talked about earlier, we want to start, we want to end on time with every care plan, is because that means that if somebody ends late or they, 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 there's a rhythm issue where, we, like one time a week means one time a week. So somebody says, well, I come in, like, like how often should I come in? Well, you know, three times a week is our corrective frequency. And, if we're, and so if we miss that, we're not correcting, we're stabilizing. The, at one time a week, that's what we call wellness development. And every, if we're at every two weeks, well, that's just maintenance. We're just maintaining you where you're at. 
So eventually when we get through this corrective process, it'll probably be at once a week, which is a wellness development. Um, and we'll continue on working on that health, that third tier healthcare, as opposed to just maintaining something. Because it's like trying to maintain your relationship with your wife, right? Not a, not a good plan. We want to develop that relationship and keep working on it. So I appreciate you guys. I hope you got more out tonight than you were expecting. And but like I said, it's about that mindset. In your packet, I'm just gonna steal it for again. I didn't get my very own packet. Right at the front here, uh, there's a coupon, uh, and it, it should be 20% off any of, our, of the supplements that we that we have in the office there. Uh, yes. Bundles. Bundles. 10% off supplements. 10% off supplements. Okay. So here's the thing. This is the, the like if you, there's a crisis care issue. This is this is this one. Uh, this is the key right here for your um, if you're going to do your uh, plan there um, as far as the the, 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 the reset plan there. Okay, uh, and it has the green vibrance in there, which is about five pounds of vegetables with every serving. Uh, it has uh, grass-fed protein in there, and if you can have plant protein if you're vegetarian. Uh, but it has grass-fed protein in there, which is like from Swiss cows, which they detox and they spray the fields with like fish so that they have high levels of omega-3. I mean, it's ridiculous. With the detox system in there, there's the daily defense right there, which is a highly concentrated antioxidant, which will actually uh, minimize, like, well, will help to, re we added that in because it helped to reduce some of the feelings of as your body's detoxing there. Uh, but then, you know, we have, these are the, you know, the, if people ask me, like, what I should be taking, baseline is your essentials. Like, you're not going to do anything, just do your daily essentials. That's the starting point there. So, I appreciate you guys, and, like, my, like my job is to pour energy to you, um, because we know if the alternative, if we don't do that, then we end up like everybody else does, and hopefully we'll, over time, we'll take the red pill, right? You know, like, we, we'll, we'll do the opposite of what everybody else is doing, and then we'll have an opposite of Okay, guys? So I appreciate it. Love you guys, and thank you thank so you. much. So what is collagen? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, so collagen, will you turn that off and duck to us? Let me just turn these off.